Okay, so now we come to the informal definition of a limit, right? Um, so by informal, I mean not, not exactly rigorous, um, right? This is not as precise as, you know, we're going to get eventually, but for now, it's, it's good enough. And it will actually help us calculate limits uh, as a practical matter. Okay, so we start with a function, right? So we're given some function. I'll just call it f of x, right? So it could, it could, for example, be the position function s of t, if I change f to s and x to t. Um, but it could be any function in, in general, right? So we're given some function, right? And what we wanted, what we want to calculate is the limit as x gets close to or approaches some number, we use a, of the quantity, oops, the quantity f of x. So that limit is going to be called L, L for limit, if the following happens, right? right. If f of x gets close to or approaches the number L. Right. So if f gets close to L, as x gets close to a, or approaches a, right, then we can say the limit of f of x as x approaches a is L. And we write it, we abbreviate limit, L-I-M, and we want to express that x is getting close to a, so we, we have x with the little arrow pointing towards a, and we're calculating the limit of the function f of x, and that limit is going to be L. All right, so that's the notation for the limit as x approaches a of the function f of x being some number L. Okay. So yeah, it doesn't, doesn't make a whole lot of sense at this point. Um, or maybe it does if, if you studied carefully the example of position and velocity last time. But let's make this a little bit clearer, just using some examples. Okay, so for our first example, uh, we're going to let the function f of x be 3x plus 1. Right? So pretty easy function to start. And we want to calculate the limit as x approaches 2 of this function f of x. Right? And in fact, we can write the limit as x approaches 2 of the function, in this case, is just 3x plus 1. Right? So what does that equal? Right? What is L in this case? Right? So that's the question. Right? And there's various ways we can answer this. Right? There's various ways we can try to calculate this. And the way we're going to do it is the way we, we sort of did it in the previous video. We're going to do this numerically. Okay. So Right, so x is approaching 2, right? The a in this example here is 2, right? So what we need to do is we need to pick numbers that approach 2. What numbers are close to 2? Well, you can say 1 is close to 2, but it's not that close, right? You can get closer. You can get, using decimals, um, you can get, say, 1.5. 1. 1. Right? Or 1 point, well, let's do 1.5, right? Or you can get even closer, 1.9, right? Or 1.99, or 1.999, right? And you don't have to stop there. You can get even closer. Just add more nines. Right. Oops. Right. So the point is, these numbers, 1.9999, right? These are awfully close to the number 2. Right, they're approaching 2. So these are the x's, right? Now we want to calculate the corresponding y's. Right? So, so we're using a, a table here, we're, we're, right? So we're, we're calculating various values of y given these values of x. Okay, so f of 1, that's easy enough. This is 3 times 1 plus 1. 
So 3 plus 1 is 4. So f of 1 is equal to 4, right? f of 1.5, right? So this is 3 times 1.5 plus 1. Oops. So 4.5 plus 1 is 5.5. And, you know, let's, let's keep going, right? f of 1.9. So 3 times 1.9 plus 1. Um, so I think this is 5.7. Yeah, 5.7, I think. Plus 1, right? 5.7 plus 1 is 6.7. Right about that. All right, so 6.7. And 1.99. So if x is 1.99, this is 3 times 1.99 plus 1. And again, just using my calculator, 3, three times 1.99 is 5.97 plus 1. So you get 6.97. So I think you, you might see the pattern at this point, right? I mean, these numbers here looks like they're getting closer and closer to, well, I would say 7. But, you know, how do, how do I know it's not, you know, 6.99935? Right? It just might be close to 7. So the 7 might be an illusion, right? Well, let's keep going. Let's plug in 1.999 for x. And this will be 3 times 1.999 plus 1. And yep, that's 6.997, which is even closer to 7, right? So finally, we have 1.9999. And if you plug in 1.9999, you will end up with 6.9997. So now you definitely see the pattern, right? The more nines you have after the decimal of the one, the more nines you'll have after the decimal of the six. So, yep. So if I were to plug in something like 1.999999, I think we can guess that that would be 6.999997. Right? You, should, you should check that on your calculator. So yeah, as these numbers get closer and closer to 2, these numbers get closer and closer to 7. So again, it's, hopefully it's, it's fairly clear that these numbers are getting close to 7. And so we should say that this limit L is going to be 7, right? But notice, I only plugged in numbers that are less than 2. I should also plug in numbers bigger than 2 as well. So I'm going to essentially make another table here, right? So again, I can't plug in 2, but I can plug in numbers close to 2, right? Like 3 or 2.1, right, or 2.01, or, you know, 2.001. Maybe I can even do 2.0001. Okay, so you're just plugging these numbers into the same function. Um, remember, the function was 3x plus 1, in case you've forgotten. And I'll save you the trouble. I'll just fill in the table fairly quickly here. OK, so here's what you get when you plug in all these numbers, right? So for example, f of 3 is 10, right? 3 times 3 plus 1, 9 plus 1 is 10, and so on, right? So f of 2.1 is equal to 7.3, and so on. So as these numbers get closer and closer to 2, Right? These are the x's. x is getting closer to 2. The y's are getting closer and closer to 7. So 
Yep, so it doesn't matter if you're plugging in numbers less than 2, like 1.999, or bigger than 2, like 2.001. What happens to the y values is that right, the, y, the y values get close to 7 as, as the x values get close to 2. Right, so I think we can say pretty sure that this limit is going to be 7. I'll erase the question mark. I only did that because we want to make sure that we're, we're coming from both sides of 2, less than 2 and greater than 2. So I needed essentially two tables to do that. Okay, so, so there, we calculated our first limit, and we did it numerically. Okay, now you might think I'm absolutely insane for doing all this. I mean, this is an awful lot of work. It's, it's pretty tedious because a lot of you are probably thinking, hey, why don't you just plug in 2? Right? What's f of 2? Well, 3 times 2 plus 1, 6 plus 1 is 7. I mean, that would have saved me a whole lot of, a whole lot of trouble doing all these other values here. Right? So why didn't I do that? Well, because that's a different question, right? My question was to calculate the limit as x approaches 2 of this function. The question wasn't find the value of f of 2. If that were the question, sure, that would be a much easier question. You just plug in 2 and you get 7. Okay. So. So if you plug in 2, you get 7, and if you calculate the limit, well, you, you also get 7. But what I want to emphasize is that there's a difference, right? It, th the fact that we got 7 for both, the limit and the functional value, it's a coincidence, right? It didn't have to be that way. Okay, and we'll see that in the next example. So even if it seems really tedious, an awful lot of work to calculate all these values to calculate the limit, right? That's what you have to do because that's what this definition says, right? As x is approaching 2, x is getting closer and closer to 2, what is f of x getting closer and closer to? Right? It doesn't say what happens when x equals 2, right? So that's the difference between getting close to, right? but x does not equal 2. Okay. So we don't care what happens. The limit does not care what happens when x equals 2. It only cares what happens when x is right, close to 2, either less than 2 or greater than 2. But yeah, we don't care what happens when x equals 2. Right. It just so happens that it's the same number. 7 in this case. Right. So we'll do another example and we'll see that right this doesn't have that this did not have to happen. All right, very quickly before we do the next example, I just want to show another way to calculate the limit and that's graphically, right? Using a graph. Right, we did it numerically. So in this case, yeah, just draw the graph of y equals 3x plus 1. So I did that here in green. That's a little sloppy, but it's, it's again, it's, this is a linear function, right? You should recognize that this is a linear function, y equals mx plus b, so the slope is 3, and the y-intercept is 1, right? So, yep, this is 0, 1 for the y-intercept. And so, yeah, so calculating the limit then, as x approaches 2, of the function 3x plus 1 just means what happens when x gets close to 2, right? In this case, from the right, from less than 2, from the left side of 2, or from the right side of 2, when x is bigger than 2, right? So what happens to the corresponding y values? So the y values from the left get closer to, say, 6.9, 6 6 6.99. And from the right, they get closer to 7.03, 7.003. And either way, they get close to this point here, which is at y equals 7. Okay. 
and of course when x equals 2, y equals 7, but remember that's a separate question. The question isn't what is the value of y when x equals 2. The question is what does y get close to? Right? So this, this question here, what does y, that is 3x plus 1, get close to as x gets close to 2? Right. Right. And we know y gets close to 7. Right. So that was the answer numerically, and now we showed it using a graph as well. All right, next example. OK, so example two, we have a function x squared plus x minus 6 all over x minus 2. Okay. So slightly more complicated function. It's a rational function. Um, and we want to calculate the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, of this function. Right. And we could have just written this as find the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus x minus 6 all over x minus 2. Right? So we know what we have to do, right? x is still approaching 2, right? So we already know what numbers are close to 2. When we make our table, right? Uh, we want numbers approaching 2, both from the left and from the right. So less than 2, um, right? So I'm, I'll skip the 1 and 1 1.5. Let's just go directly to 1.9, 1 1.99, 1 and 1.999, right? And if that's not close enough, you can do 1.9999 and so on. But I think this is usually good enough. Um, you'll see the pattern, right? So bigger than 2, right, we have... Three point, I'm sorry, 2.1, right? 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, okay? Right, so remember, we don't care what happens when x equals 2, we just want to get close to 2, right? In fact, you might have tried plugging in 2 already, and you'll see that that's, that's a disaster. Right? If you plug in 2, you get 2 squared plus 2 minus 6 divided by 2 minus 2. Right? So 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 minus 6 is 0, and then 2 minus 2 is 0. We get this, this dreaded 0 over 0 again. 0 over 0 is not a number. That's not the answer. Right? Okay. And the, right, the reason why we got s such a nonsensical answer is because w we forgot to do the important thing here, what are you allowed to plug into the, into the function, right? What is its domain? Remember we talked about domain in the review video for functions, so we have to make sure that the denominator is not zero. I mean, because that's what happened. We got a denominator of zero, right? So when is x minus 2 equal to zero? Well, exactly when x equals 2. Right, so that's the, that's the exact number we should not plug into the function. In fact, you can plug in any other number you want, just not 2. So we plugged in 2, and we got nonsense. We didn't get a number. Right? There is no y value when x equals 2. Right? So, so because 2 is not in the domain, there is no y value for x equals 2. Right. So in other words, f of 2 is simply left undefined. It's not a number. It has no value. Okay. So, but again, that's a, that's a different question from what is the limit? What happens when x gets close to 2? Okay. So we're just going to plug in numbers that are not equal to 2 but as close to 2 as you want. So I'm going to start with 1.9. So we get 1.9 squared plus 1.9 minus 6 divided by 1.9 minus 2. And again, this is something you can just plug in your calculator. 
and it's 4.9. So under the table, the corresponding y value for x equals 1.9 is y equals 4.9. Right. So, right, so if you plug in 1.99, Again, you do all the calculations, 1.99 squared plus 1.99 minus 6 divided by 1.99 minus 2, Oops. and you get 4.99. Yeah. So, you know, I think I see a pattern here. Um, my guess would be that for x is 1.999, we're going to get 4.999. But again, you should make sure, don't fall into the trap that it's necessarily the case, right? Um, yeah, so my calculator says 4.999, it's correct, right? Um, and so, yeah, these numbers are look like they're getting closer and closer to five. Um, but before we, before we declare the limit to be five, right, let's plug in 2.1 into the same function, right? we end up with, well, 5.1. Again, just use your calculator. Um, if we plug in 2.01, we get 5.01. And if we plug in 2.001, we get 5.001. So definitely see a pattern here. 5.001 is awfully close to 5. And the point is, right, the more zeros you add after the 2, the more zeros you add after the 5, right, and so on. So I think we're pretty clear, right, between 4.999 and 5.001 lies 5. So this limit is going to be 5. Okay, again, this is numerically, right? Just using a table of values, we calculated this limit numerically. Right, and we can, we can also do it graphically. So let's draw the graph down here. And here's the graph, right? Um, it's kind of remarkable. It's such a complicated function, right? It's a rational function, and rational functions are usually curves, but this looks awfully straight. And in fact, this is a straight line, right? But not exactly, right? So remember, what number is not in the domain, right? The number two is not in the domain. So what that means is when x equals two, you go up, to the function and there's nothing there, right? There's a missing point, right? So a missing point in a graph is sometimes called a hole. So it's just a missing point, one missing point, right? So, so it's basically just a line with a hole in it, right? And in fact, when you try plugging in two, this is why we, we got zero over zero. There's nothing there, right? There is no y value. But the second question, the other question was, what happens when x gets close to 2, right? And numerically, we found the limit to be 5. So what happens as x right, gets closer and closer to 2? From the right side, the y values get closer and closer to, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if you're coming from the right side of 2, that is when x is greater than 2, right? this was when x is less than 2, when x is greater than 2, the y coordinates get closer and closer to 5 as well. Right? But you never make it there. You never get to 5. You can get as close as you want to 5. Right? You can get as close as you want, but you'll never make it to 5 because when x equals 2, Remember, y is undefined. So this is a good example uh, to, to illustrate the fact that you, right, when you're calculating a limit, you do not plug in the number 
you don't just plug in the 2 for x. Right? That's not how you calculate a limit. Right? In this example, it doesn't work. You plug in 2 and you don't get anything. You get undefined. And yet it does have a limit. Right? And you can see that clearly from the graph. Right? When x equals 2, there is no y value there. There's a missing point. But when x gets close to 2, the y values get close to 5. Because there's a hole instead of the point, right, 2, 5. Oops, 2, comma 5, right? So that's the, that, that's the whole idea of a limit, right? The idea of the limit is what happens to f of x as x gets close to 2, as x approaches 2. And we know the answer based on the table and based on the graph that that limit is 5. Okay. Again, this is not the only way to calculate limits. There's, there's other ways. But for now, I think this doing this numerically and by using a graph um, is sort of the best way to illustrate what we mean by limits. Right? Because sure, in the previous example, you could plug in 2 and get the value. I think it was 7. Um, but in this case, you can plug in the value 2 and not get the same thing as the limit. So let's do another example. Okay, for example three, we have a function f of x equals x squared plus 4x minus 5 all over x squared minus 1. And in this case, we want to calculate the limit as x approaches negative 1, right, of the same function. Okay, so right, in order to calculate this limit, what is L? We want to know what this function f of x gets close to as x gets close to negative 1, as x approaches negative 1, right? So let's do it the usual way, right? We're going to make a table. We're going to plug in various values of x and calculate the corresponding y's. And the number we want to get close to is negative 1. And we know by now, let's not bother plugging in negative 1 because we don't care, right? That has nothing to do with the limit. Or if it, if it does, it's a coincidence, right? So, yep, so we don't care what happens when x equals negative 1, but we want to get close to negative 1. So what numbers are less than negative 1? Well, there's negative 2, right? But we can get closer than that. We can get to negative 1 point, well, let's do negative 1.1 negative 1.01, negative 1.001. So all these numbers are slightly less than negative 1. And what numbers are bigger than negative 1? Well, there's 0, but there's also um, negative 0 0.9, negative 0 0.99, and negative 0 0.999, right? And you can get closer, right? You can add more 9s if you want. But this is probably going to be good enough, um, at least if we see a pattern. Again, if you don't see a pattern, just, just keep adding 9s, right? But the point is these values are bigger than negative 1. These values are less than negative 1. So we want to come from both sides, left and right, of negative 1. All right, so at this point, now we just plug in the numbers. If we plug in negative 2... Um, and, you know, let's, let's do that. Negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 minus 5 is the numerator. And the denominator is negative 2 squared minus 1. So I think we get 4 minus 8 minus 5. So 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. And then we get 4 minus 1 is 3, so we get negative 3. Again, that doesn't tell us anything right now because that's just not anywhere near close enough, right? Negative 2 is just not close enough to negative 1, you know, to come up with any conclusions at this point, right? So, yeah, so we have to keep going, right? Let's plug in negative 1.1, right? And again, it's, it's tedious, right? You just use your calculator and we get 
negative 39. Oops. Interesting, right? Negative 39. And if we plug in negative 1.01 into the same formula, right? So x is negative 1.01. So this is going to be negative 1.01 squared minus 4 times negative 1.01 minus 5. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, plus, plus 4x. So that should be a plus 4. And then divide by negative 1.01 squared minus 1. So you do all that, and you get negative 399. Okay, so plug in negative 1.001, right? And you know how to do that, right? Just use your calculator, and you get negative 3,999. Hmm. So what's that close to? What what are we getting close to here? Right? You might think, well, that's awfully close to negative 4,000. Uh, that's probably true. But if you plug in negative 1.0001, you'll see you get negative 39,999. And that's not close to negative 4,000, right? That's close to negative 40,000. So yeah, these numbers are not getting close to anything. They're just getting more and more negative, right? You can imagine if I had four zeros here, um, I would get negative 399,999, and that's close to negative 400,000. So we're just getting more and more negative. Right? So this doesn't seem to be getting close to any one particular number. All right, so, so that's what happens when x is less than negative 1. What about when x is bigger than negative 1, right? So if you plug in 0, um, you're going to get 5. I just kind of did that in my head, right? It's 0 plus 0 minus 5 over 0 minus 1. And if you plug in negative 0 0.9, you're going to get negative 41. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not negative. It's, it's actually positive 41. And if you plug in negative 0.99, you get 401. And negative 0.999, you get 4001. Again, these numbers are not getting close to anything. If you think, well, this is close to 4000, sure. But if I were to plug in something where x is even closer to negative 1, negative 0.9999, you're going to get 40,001, right? And then 400,000, and then 4 million and one, and so on. So these numbers are just getting bigger and bigger. These are getting more and more positive, right? So they're not getting close to anything. Oh, you might think, well, they're, they're getting bigger, so they're getting close to infinity. Um, but infinity is not a number, right? Infinity is not a number. Right. Right. This, this idea of infinity just means that, well, you can get as big as you want, right? There is no largest number, right? Any, any, any number you think is large, right? So 400, that 4 million, right? You can get bigger than 4 million. Just add 1, 4 million and 1, or 4 million and 2. Right, so there is no largest number, right? Numbers just keep going forever and ever. So that's this idea, right? So infinity is more of more of an idea, right? It's, it's the idea of what happens when numbers just keep getting bigger, right? And if x is less than negative one, right? These numbers were getting more and more negative. So you might think, right, negative infinity. But again, negative infinity is not a number, it's just the idea that numbers can get bigger and bigger in the negative direction, right? So there is no L here, there is no limit, right? 
So when that happens, we can say this limit simply does not exist. Right. Right. Or you can use DNE to abbreviate does not exist. Right. So yeah, it, not everything has to have a limit here. Right? This function, as x approaches negative 1, right, has no limit. So let's, let's draw the graph and you'll see what's going on in this case. Okay, so here's the graph of the function x squared plus 4x minus 5 over x squared minus 1. And so remember the question was to find the limit as x approaches negative 1 right, of this function. Right. And we said there's, there's no answer, right? There's no limit. The limit does not exist. And we can see why now, right? As we're approaching negative 1 from the left side, right, we can see that the y values are just going down. Not, not quite straight down, but v almost vertical, right? right? So this is why we were getting, you know, negative, uh, you know, 3,999, 3, right? So... Right, so we're, we're going way down into the abyss here, right? And likewise, if we're coming from the right side, we plugged in, say, negative, you know, 0.9, negative 0.99, and all that, we got something very big, right? Like 401 or 4001. So you can see the graph is just getting, it's just blowing up, right? It's going almost straight up. So, right, so it's approaching this, this vertical line, x equals negative 1, is this vertical line. It's not part of the graph, but it, it gets close to the graph. So if you remember, we call this line a vertical asymptote. Right. Right. And it's true also that when you plug in negative 1, there's, there's no value, right? It's undefined. So there is no y-coordinate when x equals negative 1. Right. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't have a limit. Right. If you go back to example 2, the function was undefined, but it did have a limit. Right. I believe the limit was 5, even though the function was undefined at x equals 2. Right. So here, we have both going on. The function is not defined, and there's no limit. The limit does not exist. Okay, so key, right, I mean, I don't want to get uh, too pedantic here, but there's a difference between undefined and does not exist, right? Don't say that the limit is undefined, right? That's talking about the functional values, right? What happens when x equals negative 1, right? The function is undefined there. It has no value. But when you're talking about a limit, the limit is either a number or it isn't. And if it's not a number... We say the limit right, d does not exist. Okay. So, so, yeah, limits either exist or don't exist. Function values are either defined or undefined. Right. So that's just the terminology there. Okay, so, yeah, this was, again, a good example to illustrate that the limit doesn't always have to exist. And if you have a vertical asymptote, that's a very good indication <laughs> that the limit will not exist, right? So vertical asymptotes tell you that the limit does not exist. Okay. Um, so while I have the graph up, we can, we can do another example. We can calculate the limit as x approaches, let's do positive 1, of the same function, right? x squared plus 4x minus 5 over x squared minus 1. Right. And again, if you plug in positive 1, this is also undefined. Right? Because the denominator 1 squared minus 1 is still 0. Right? So when you divide by 0, you don't, right, you don't get a number. 
But we can see from the graph, as x approaches 1, uh, let me use a different color here, as x approaches 1, the y values get closer and closer to, so it looks like 3. And the same thing happens from the right side. The y values here get closer and closer to 3. So it looks like this limit is going to equal 3. Right. So that's where the hole is. Right. There's a hole at the point x equals 1, y equals 3. Right. So it's a missing point, and that's why it was undefined. There's no y-coordinate there. But the points nearby have y-coordinates that are close to 3. Okay, so that limit does exist, and the limit is 3. And of course, you can also get that by making a table, right? Plugging values that are where x is close to positive 1. So, right, so from the left, you might get 0 0.9, 0 0.99, and so on. And from the right, you might get 1.1 or 1.01. And you'll see that these numbers are, you know, fairly close to 3. Right, so you might get, you know, 3.01 or 2.99. And from there, you can deduce that right, these are approaching 3. Okay, so, I, so I hope that helps. OK, next example, example 4. So we have a function. Uh, I'll call it g of x this time. They don't always have to be f of x, right? So g of x is the piecewise defined function, right? So it's defined as x plus 4 if x is less than negative 3, and 2x plus 10 if x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And our job is to find the limit as x approaches negative 3. Okay. Well, again, we have two good ways of doing this. We could draw the graph, or we can make a table. Um, so I'll, I'll do the table first, and then we can see what happens for the graph as well. So here, we're approaching negative 3. x is approaching negative 3. Right, so what is y approaching? So let's find numbers that are close to negative 3. Right? If you're less than negative 3, you have negative, say, 3.1, negative 3.01, negative 3.001, probably good enough. And if you're bigger than negative 3, you have negative 2.9, negative 2.99, and negative 2.999. So we're going to plug in all these numbers into, into the function. So negative 3.01 is less than negative 3, so we're using the top piece, right? So negative 3.1 plus 4 is 0 0.9. And yeah, negative 3.01, if that's our x, then the y-coordinate is negative 3.01 plus 4, which is 0 0.99. Right. And finally, negative, if x is negative 3.001, y is going to be 0 0.999. And I think that's pretty clear enough, right? Obviously, the, the more zeros you add after the negative 3, right, the more 9s you add after the decimal point. So these look like they're getting close to 1. Okay, So, so maybe this limit is just 1. Well, in order to, to determine that for sure, we have to plug in numbers that are bigger than negative 3, right? So we also have to plug in negative 2.9. And here you have to be careful, because you don't just add 4 to that, right? If you're bigger than negative 3, right? So, so for these values, x is greater than negative 3. You have to use the bottom piece, 2x plus 10. So this is going to be 2 times negative 2.9 plus 10. And that's 4.2. So plug in negative 
times my calculator says 4.02. So when x is negative 2.999, my calculator says 4.002. So maybe not exactly clear, but I think we see a pattern here, right? The next one would be 4.0002 and so on. So these numbers are getting close to four. But that's not the same as one, right? So what are they getting close to, one or four? Yeah, but neither, right? You can't say both, right? You can't say the limit is one and four. I mean, if it has a limit, it's a number. You can't have two numbers, right? Any more than a functional value can have two, two numbers, right? If I plug in zero, right, my answer can't be four and 10, right? I don't plug them into both pieces at once, right? When x is zero, zero is bigger than negative three, so I plug it into the bottom piece, not the top piece. So g of zero is, is definitely 10. It can't be two different numbers, right? For every x, there's only one y. And that's true for limits as well, right? There's only one limit, if there's a limit at all. So rather than say the limit is one and four, we have to give up and say it's, it's actually neither. It's neither one nor four, right? So this, again, does not have a limit. This limit does not exist. Right. So oops. Yeah. this limit does not exist. Okay. And the reason is because, remember, we have to come from both sides less than negative three and greater than negative three. And they have to agree. They have to be the same value that they're approaching. And in this case, they're approaching two different numbers. Okay. That, right. So that said, what we could say is suppose we only care what happens, right, when x is less than negative three. Right? We don't care what happens when x is bigger than negative three. And in that case, the, right, the, the y values seem to be approaching one. So what we can say is the limit, and let me write it out in words here, the limit as x approaches negative three, right, let's say from the left side, and by that I mean right, x is less than negative three, Right? That limit is going to be 1. Right? On the other hand, the limit, right, as x approaches negative 3 again, but coming from the right side, right? so when x is bigger than negative 3, Right, that that limit is four. Right, because we don't care what happens when x is less than negative three. So, right, so we have a left-handed limit and a right-handed limit. So the notation for that is if I want the left-handed limit, x is approaching negative three, but from the left side. In other words, from the negative side of three. So I'm going to put a little negative sign there. Right. That limit we said was one. And the limit as x approaches negative three from the right side, right, so from the positive side, that limit is four. So that's okay. You can have a left-handed limit and you can have a right-handed limit and they don't have to be the same. In fact, here they're not. But if you just write x approaches negative three, and you don't indicate from the left or from the right, then this means from both sides. 
from both the left side and the right side. And they have to agree. Because they don't agree, we give up and say the limit does not exist. Okay, even though the left-handed limit exists and the right-handed limit exists, if they're not the same, right, then the limit from both sides does not exist. Right, and that's, that's essentially the first theorem. Oh, I hate to label these, but theorem 2.1 in the book basically just says that, right, if you have the limit as x approaches some number a of f of x, if that limit is L, right, then, and in fact it's true the other way as well, um, you have both the left-handed limit has to be L and the right-handed limit. Right, so from the plus side, from the, from the positive side, right, from the right, also has to be L. So if both of these left-handed limit and right-handed limits agree, and they're both equal to L, then the limit equals L. And if the limit is L, then we know both the left-handed and the right-handed limit have to be L as well. They have to agree. Okay. So this is the idea of like, the left-handed limit. Make that clear. Right, and that means you have a little negative sign here. Right. And the right-handed limit is over here. And that's indicated by the little plus sign. But if there is no negative or positive here above the negative three, that means it's naturally from both sides. Okay, so if, you're on, if you know you're only calculating the left-handed limits, then you only need to plug in these numbers here that are less than negative three. And if you're calculating the right-handed limits, then you only need to plug in these numbers here that are bigger than negative three. But if you wanna calculate the limit as we did here, as x approaches negative 3, then you have to do both the left and the right. And if they agree, then that's the limit. And if they don't agree, then there is no limit. Okay. And so we did that by, again, using the table. We did this numerically, but we can also use a graph. Okay, so here's the graph. Um, again, because this is a piecewise function, right, I graphed the line y equals 2x plus 10 when x is greater than or equal to negative 3, and that's what it looks like. And then I also graphed y equals x plus 4, but only when x is less than negative 3, and that's what that looks like. So when x equals negative 3, this does have a functional value, right? We never did plug in negative 3, um, because remember, when you're, when you're finding the limit, we don't plug in the negative three, right? We don't care what happens when x equals negative three. But in this case, because there's the equal sign here, this is two times negative three plus 10, which is negative six plus 10, which is equal to four. And that's indicated by this point right here, right? When x is negative three, y is equal to four. Right. But that has nothing to do with the limit, right? It's, it's, it is the right-handed limit, right? The limit coming from the right side was equal to four, right? But the limit coming from the left side, right, was equal to one, right? So you can get as close to, y can get as close to one as you want as x approaches negative three from the left, but you'll never make it to one, right? So you have this little jump here from one to three. And again, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, so this, this is what happens. So as x is approaching negative 3, it matters whether you're coming from the left side or the right side. You get two different answers. And because of that, we, we simply give up and say there is no limit. Right? It would have to be the same from both sides. Right? And that can happen with these piecewise functions. 
but it doesn't happen in this example here. Right. So maybe I'll do one more example to show you where right, you, you could have a limit even though you have a piecewise defined function. Okay, so last example f of x is again a piecewise function 5 minus x if x is less than 2 and it's equal to 2x minus 1 if x is greater than 2. Right? And we want to find the limit of course as x approaches 2 because that's where it's divided up right into left and right. Okay so in this case I think um, rather than use a table we can go directly to the graph. It's probably a little more direct. Um, I got to draw the y-axis carefully here. Okay, so we have x equals one, two, three, four, five. Right. Negative one, negative two, and so on. And then y is going to be one, two, three, four, six. I hope I did this right. And maybe negative one, negative two, and so on. All right. So yeah, so let's start with the top piece y equals 5 minus x. Right? You can think of it as negative 1x plus 5. Right? But that's only for x is less than 2, and 0 is less than 2, so we have 0, 5. 1 is less than 2, so 5 minus 1 is 4. That's right there. Right? And we know it's a linear function, so we can just connect the dots with a straight line like this. But be careful, once you get to 2, it stops, right? And there's no equal sign here. If this was less than or equal to 2, all that, ma all that means here is that you would fill in the hole, right? But because there's no equal sign, we leave it as a hole here, right? Okay, so that's the left piece. What about the right piece or the bottom piece? So this is y equals 2x minus 1. Just be careful you don't plug in numbers that are less than 2. You can plug in numbers bigger than 2, like 3. 2 times 3 minus 1 is 5. So that's up here. Um, I should use red for this. Right. OK. And let's see, if you plug in 4, you get 7, and so on, right? So you get this straight line here. And you can get as close to 2 as you want without actually getting there. Right? So you can see there's also a hole coming from the right side. So in other words, this function is simply not defined at x equals 2. Because it doesn't tell you what happens if x equals 2. So we have to assume that there's, there's nothing there. Right? There's no y value. Right. On the other hand, you can see pretty clearly, again, it's a little bit sloppy, but the hole, when x equals 2, there's no point there. So there's a hole at the point 2, 3. Right? There's a missing point. Right? So this is, this is missing from the graph. Right. So we can say the limit as x approaches 2 of this function is 3. Right, And that means if you come from the, the left side of 2, the negative side of 2, right, um, when x is less than 2, this function is just oops, 5 minus x. So as you're approaching 5 minus 2, that's going to be 3. So that's the left-handed limit. And then the right-handed limit as x approaches 2 from the right side. Well, coming from the right, when x is greater than 2, this is just the function 2x minus 1. And again, you can, you know, you can plug in 2 here. 2 times 2 minus 1 is equal to 3. But, right, that's only because, right, at, the whole is at 2, 3. So if I were to plug in 2, I would get 3, but you can't plug in 2, right? That's the whole idea of a limit. You can only plug in numbers that are close to 2, like 2.01, 2.001, 2 
And when you plug in those numbers, you're going to get things like, you know, 3.002 or you know, 3.02, 3.002, and so on. So those numbers are getting close to 3 without actually reaching 3, without actually getting to 3. Right, so that's the idea of a limit. It's not what happens when x equals 2. It's what happens when x gets close to 2. When x gets close to 2, y gets close to 3. And in this case, from both sides. Right. So it wouldn't have mattered at all if I actually did define this function right at x equals 2. If I put an equal sign here, all that would change is that, yeah, f of 2 would equal 3. And then I would fill in, this, fill in the hole here. So that does not change the limit. Right. So it, it wouldn't matter whether f of 2 equals 3 or whether it's undefined. Right. So in both cases, the limit is 3. So the left-handed limit and the right-handed limit had to agree for this limit to equal 3. Okay. So that's the idea of left-handed limits and, oops, sorry, and right-handed limits. Um, yeah, so if you're making a table, right, and you want to calculate the left-handed limit, right, as x approaches 2 from the left, right, then when you make a table, you only need numbers that are less than 2, right, so 1.9, 1 1.99, 1 1.999, and so on. And if you want to calculate the limit as x approaches 2, but from the right side, then you're just plugging in numbers that are slightly bigger than 2. So 2.1, 2.01, 2.001. Again, those are just good representatives. Um, you know, if, if you want to plug in 2.0001, that's fine too. That's right. So that should give you a number that's even closer to, to 3. But if you want the limit from both sides, then you have to do essentially both tables. And whatever, whatever each individual left-handed and right-handed limit are, they would have to agree in order for the limit to exist. And that's exactly what happens here. Right? So just because it's a piecewise function doesn't mean you don't have a limit. Right? It's, you have to check from both sides. Okay, and maybe one last example, right? It's another piecewise function. So f of x is equal to x squared if x is not equal to 2, and it's equal to 0 if x equals 2. Right, so what's the limit as x approaches 2? Right. And I hope by now your instinct to just plug in 2, please don't do that, right? That's not what the limit is here, right? It might be in some cases, but in other cases it isn't. When we're calculating the limit, we want to know what happens when x is close to 2. And again, I know we've, we've used 2 a lot in this, in this video, but you know, we had other examples where it's approaching, say, negative 1, right? So um, yeah, so we'll go back to 2 again. So what numbers are close to 2? The usual ones, right? 1.9, 1.99, 1.999. And that's if you're approaching 2 from the left, right? But we also want to approach 2 from the right. So numbers bigger than 2, right? 2.1, 2.01, 2.001. OK, so you plug in these numbers. And again, you can just use your calculator, um, right? So 1.9 squared is 3.61. 1.99 squared is 3.9601. And then 1.999 squared is, oh, I'm going to run out of space here. It's 3.996001. So what is that close to? Well, it's pretty close to 4. I mean, if you do one more, right, f of... 1.9999, this is even closer to 4, 
So, yep, that's about four. So it looks like the limit is four. Or is it, right? So up until now, we only calculated the left-handed limit. Right, so I'll put a little minus sign there above the two. We also have to calculate the right-handed limit. So plugging in numbers that are bigger than two, right? So 2.1 squared is 4.41. 2.01 squared is 4.0401. And then 2.001 squared oops, is 4.004001. And Sure enough, if you plug in 2.0001, you'll get 4.0004001. And that looks like it's getting close to four as well. So, so the right-handed limit is also four. So I think we can say for sure that this limit, oops, I didn't write down the original question here. The original question was, what's the limit as x approaches two of this function? And we can say for sure the limit is 4, right? which is not what you get when you plug in 2. When you plug in 2, you get 0. Oops, sorry, 0. So yeah, you don't calculate the limit by just plugging in the number. It doesn't work in this case. It may work in some cases. right? In some cases, you'll get the same answer for both, but not in this case. And you can see that from the graph as well. So I'll just do a very quick graph here. Uh, one, two, three, four. I think that's all we need. Two. Yeah. So the graph is really just x squared, except at two. At two, it's defined to be zero. So. Just the usual parabola here. Okay, that's a little sloppy. Okay, close enough, right? So when x is 2, y is 0, right? So this is the point 2, 0. So f of 2 is defined to be 0. But as x approaches 2, from either side, the y values get close to 4. So for that, we write the limit as x approaches 2 is equal to 4. So that's our L. That's our limit. OK. So I hope this helps, right? You can get the limit either from a table or by drawing the graph.